Uh, moving on to the next. Yeah. Yeah, okay, listen. Uh, that is disgusting. Like, that's awful. I... And what I'm trying to say here is, I wouldn't be surprised if that would have destroyed some of the follicles. Because, look at that. Like, if you zoom in, let's go over here. If you zoom in real close, that is like... Maybe this... Maybe I'm thinking about it too much, but this looks like some sort of scar tissue. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at a hair transplant procedure. And this is from Dr. Lao Wang. And their patient on Reddit, the subreddit known as Hair Transplant. So... We're actually going to be looking at a potentially failed hair transplant by this particular hair transplant surgeon. And, you know, hair transplants, as with any surgery, have risks, right? Um, they're not always going to be successful. There will be some sort of failure rate. But we're going to see how bad this transplant ended. Um, again, it's only five months in, so surely things can get better. But this user who's a patient of this particular doctor from Thailand, Dr. Lao Wong, seemed to have had some issues. So we're going to be looking at some of the descriptions real quick, and then we'll look at the post. So they said, uh, All right, folks, many of you have asked for an update and DM'd me about my infection. So it looks like you had an infection. Here's the timeline. So September 23rd, they had the surgery. September 25th, looks like nothing happened that day. October 1st, at this time, they had not realized that these are signs of infections and they thought that it was residue from the balm that they were given. So I guess typically after a hair transplant, they give you some sort of anti, you know, microbial solution or gel to put on your scalp to kind of kill any sort of harmful microbes that could be potentially infecting the area or may potentially infect the area. So over here, they say on October 4th, the infection was at its peak and they were super worried. The antibacterial spray that they had been given by that Dr. La Wong popped during their flight and they immediately booked with a dermatologist in their area when they landed and they got prescribed antibiotics and they can, you know, it looks like they'll say they update, they'll, they'll update the name later about what those meds were. So on October 8th, they said that the meds seemed to help a lot. They felt more comfortable cleaning their scalp, and they were a bit more rougher and thorough with their cleaning of their scalp. Over here on October 16th, they said they had a lot of dandruff. Their eyes also got infected. Okay, that's actually kind of gross. We're not going to read too much there. <laughs> so November 7th, they had a shed. So this is the shed from, uh, you know, the initial hair that fell out. So they're thinking, okay, yes, everything, you know, has a shed and now it's time to have a re regrowing. And now it's uh, today. Today being at the time recording this video. I'll, surely I'll be posting this in the future. By the time recording this video, it's February 22nd, 2025. So now we're going to be looking at the pictures here right now. So they did mention that they did a hair transplant and also some beard. I guess a beard transplant as well. Um, but we're just going to be focusing on their hair transplant. So let's look at the hairline real quick, right? If we zoom in here, uh, we can see that the hairline is densely packed. There are a lot of follicles that are put into this area, right? And it looks like they also rebuilt some of the temporal region over here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of follicles here. And, you know, this could be... A risk, and the only reason why I say it's a risk is because when you're putting a lot of follicles in a small area, all the follicles are trying to get, you know, sufficient blood supply, right? But in doing so, it can potentially cause necrosis of the area, right? Because there's not a sufficient blood supply to feed those follicles. So aspect of the skin and follicles begin to die. So that's, that's not a good sign. That's not good for... um you know, the longevity of your scalp, especially in the, in the area. Because if you have necrotic tissue just in one area on the hairline, that can impact other follicles behind the hairline, right? So if you're paying attention to this uh, mouse cursor, let's say he had necrosis along, you know, this part of the hairline, right? This can also affect the native hairs behind the transplanted region, right? Because the necrosis can spread. And it's a, it can be a, an infection of sorts. So it's probably not a good idea to, you know, 
but a lot of follicles in a small area. So that's that's not a good thing that they uh, that they did. At least in my perspective, other people might have their own opinion, but I think this is a lot of follicles here for the hairline. Um, but again, I, they put 2,500. I don't know if that was necessary, right? I mean, we'll see later on maybe the uh, the area in question, but maybe he could have gotten away with 1,500, right? That was a that was a bit too much. So here we have another view of it. I guess this is the post transplant. Yeah, you can kind of see the lighting is a bit you know harsh. I can't really make it out when I zoom in, but you can see you know the area they transplanted in. This was very small. A lot of follicles. This is not necessary to put two thousand five hundred over here, right? This is this that was way too much. So okay, now this is gonna get gross. <laughs> Look at this. Like, this is a clear infection of some kind, right? First off, you can see in this area of the hairline that they made that the skin is raised and it's inflamed, right? It's normal to have some sort of inflammation sometimes after a hair transplant. But what's not normal are these little pustule, you know, things coming out of the scalp. That is not, that's not necessarily normal. So a little bit of it is normal, but... You can see that the, a lot of the follicles in this area, they seem to have some sort of weird like pus coming out of it. That's not a good sign. That's a sign of an early infection. Um, and I think he would have done better had they used fewer grafts. So this is uh this is terrible, to say the least. Very, very disgusting. Um just weird. Uh moving on to the next. Uh yeah, okay, listen. Uh, that is disgusting. Like, that's awful. I, uh, I don't, even, I don't even feel so, I don't feel so good looking at this. Um, but you can see over here again, let's go to the previous picture. Um, th this is the hairline, right? Okay. Look at how densely packed it was. And, uh, this is, I guess a month later or so, right? And I guess this is within the same month. Uh, you can see here clearly there are infected areas. There is a mass folliculitis outbreak going on. Not only that, but if you look at the temporal region over here, where you had hair transplants on the temple, right? There's folliculitis. And it's a really bad folliculitis. It's not just like a minor one. This is the kind of folliculitis that can cause scarring of the tissue fibrosis because of how large the area of inflammation is and he has multiple sites of folliculitis of a very bad folliculitis look at this like if i wanted to zoom in here look at that that's disgusting and this is the consequence of uh one maybe you know i i, I don't know i, I would want to say that this is the consequence of having you know unsanitary uh non-sterile equipment but i don't think that's the case right i don't think it's the case of having non-sterile equipment because if it was he would have gotten that sort of infection literally days after the transplant but it looks like this was a you know maybe a couple weeks later right um i think this is the result of the healing process right but also the fact that there were just so many follicles in one spot that it may have disrupted any proper healing process. So days later, weeks later, you know, we, we already have microbes on our skin, right? Um, maybe they were sufficiently able to get into the deeper layers of the skin to cause an inflammation process. So that's, you know, that's not good. That's obviously bad. This is what can cause a failure of a hair transplant because this is also damaging the follicles. This kind of inflammation is going to damage the follicles, could potentially leave scar tissue. So let's reset here real quick. Uh, let's move on to the next. Okay, now it looks like this is the part where the infection kind of subsides a bit. You can see over here where, you know, there's still some, like a little bit of folliculitis, like flakes here and there, but it looks like it's clearing up. It's way better than it was before, right? where they just had pus coming out of their scalp. But clearly there is some improvements now. It's not as inflamed. It still is inflamed in certain areas. Like here, 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 and here. But for the most part, it's just, uh, it's just red, 
which is still a sign of inflammation, but it's not as bad as, as it was before. And over here, the inflammation has largely subsided. They're able to clean their scalp. Hopefully the hair can grow back now. Um, but it looks like the, uh, the area shed out a bit, right? No infection, though. It's still slightly red, but there's no infection. Um, there are some hairs that are kind of growing back, some early, some early hairs coming back, growing out of the scalp. But, you know, maybe this is too early to call judgment, but I, I would be kind of nervous, right? Considering if we go back a couple of weeks into the camera roll here, uh, the amount of inflammation this guy had. So g going over to when the early signs of the, you know, infection started to occur, right? It comprised a lot of the transplanted, uh, you know, or the recipient area, right? And moving forward from there, just the, the scale and the mass in which the folliculitis existed in, uh, it, was, it was very, very bad. And what I'm trying to say here is I wouldn't be surprised if that would have destroyed some of the follicles because look at that. Like if you zoom in, let's go over here. If you zoom in real close, that is like... Maybe this, maybe I'm thinking about it too much, but this looks like some sort of scar tissue, right? I could be wrong, but it does look like some, some scar tissue was left behind, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, he's not going to be a happy camper by any means. And look at that. Let's, uh, let's try to zoom in over here as well. This is the next picture. Like over here definitely looks like a different consistency. If I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I, I personally don't see many of these hairs coming out or coming back. Like this looks like scar tissue over here. Wow. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. And look again, right? Like this is the kind of, uh, like you, you don't see any like openings over here. It looks very like just fibrotic, right? Over here, especially. Look at that scar tissue in the area. Unfortunately, scar tissue. You can see it here. Look at this. I'm going to try to outline with the, uh, with the cursor if you're looking at the screen, but this is a large area of scar tissue over here, such that I don't think any of the follicles survived this transplant. Maybe like one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, seven, I don't know. But clearly this transplant failed. And if I had to, you know, again, attribute it to a particular cause, it would be one. Let's go back to the first picture, right? The, the dense, the dense packing of uh, the follicles in the area, which contributed to the folliculitis. And, you know, maybe there's a lot of ingrown hairs too as well. And that caused some scarring in the process. So very unfortunate. His donor area, actually, if you zoom in real quick, doesn't look bad at all. Like this is a really good donor area after a transplant. You know, the, the harvesting was very spaced out. So his donor area looks good, but it's a shame to lose 2,500 grafts in the process. Um, it, it just... Yeah, a, a, a huge shame. Very, very, very sad. So all in all, if I had to say, I don't think this guy is going to get the desired result. He's not like, if we compare this picture over here, right? Let me do something real quick. This picture with, let's go all the way over here. Like he's not going to get this hairline shape. Like it's just going to look like this, unfortunately. Because a lot of these follicles probably became ingrown hairs, which contributed to the folliculitis. Um, they were probably killed during the uh, folliculitis outbreak that he had. And it left some scar tissue in the area of the, you know, the, the transplanted region. So this is a unfortunate failed hair transplant. And I know we're only five months in, as he says in his post. You know, he's only five months in, right? But... This is a failed hair transplant, unfortunately. And I, and, I, and I hope I'm wrong, right? I hope I'm wrong, but uh, I think I'm right about this. So, you know, this is an ad hoc reaction. This is the end of the video. Very, very bad transplant. Hopefully this wasn't the decision of the doctor, because if it was the decision of the doctor, then it's bad. Um, I, now that I'm thinking about it, there was a mention of some of these grafts being used in his beard area. He doesn't show us. He says, PS, didn't post beard pics. My beard already uh, was pretty good. I was just filling in a spot 
no growth there either. That, okay, so that's even bad too. So they couldn't have used that many grafts in his beard. Even if they used like maybe 100, right? Or 200. 2,300 or 2,400 being used in that area of the hairline, this area, it's just way too much. He could have gotten away with using 1,500 grafts. But in any case, again, failed hair transplant. Even though we're five months in, I don't think it's going to get any better than this. Uh, and by better, it's not going to get better at all. So I hope I'm wrong. Hope this guy, you know, can get a better transplant in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you're interested in learning more about, you know, hair transplants, also learning more about just androgenetic alopecia and other alopecias, you can check out my YouTube channel. I've done a lot of research, posted it publicly. You can cross with the references that I use as well. And if you want to have more informed discussions that you can possibly take to your doctor, you can sign up with my consultation link. It's in the description, along with other sort of links. You can look at my articles as well. All that is in the description. So thanks for watching this video. And yeah, <laughs> this is pretty disgusting. Like, look at this picture over here. That's awful, awful folliculitis. Um, just real quick, like, yeah, look at that. Oh man, this is, of course, this is going to leave scar tissue, but anyway, see you on the next video guys. Peace out.